In this math lesson number four, we're going to get into how to calculate interest on loans and also how to calculate the loan amount given the sales price or value of the property and the what's called the loan to value ratio. Welcome to math lesson number four, interest and loan amounts. First of all, let's take a look at some definitions and formulas. And with our memory circle, the small dollars on this type of problem will be interest and the large dollars will be the principal or the loan amount and the rate of course would be the interest rate. So knowing this we can say that the interest is equal to the principal times the rate. I is equal to P times R. Well using the memory circle to find the principal we cover that up and it tells us to divide the interest by the rate. So P is equal to I divided by R. And if we're looking for the rate, we cover that up, and it tells us to divide the interest by the principal. So the rate is equal to I divided by P. Please realize that interest is always expressed as an annual rate. Keep in mind, the interest is the small dollars goes on top versus the principal or loan amount on the bottom times the rate. We're also going to be looking at some loan amount problems. In other words, let's say the borrower was buying a home for $100,000 and they were getting an 80% loan. The loan amount would be equal to the value, that would be that $100,000, times what we call the loan to value ratio, the 80% in that example. So in our memory circle, the loan amount is smaller than the actual value of the property, so the loan amount will be the small dollars on top with the value the large dollars and then the loan to value ratio will be the rate. So the loan then is equal to the value times the loan to value ratio. The value is equal to the loan, the loan amount divided by the loan to value rate or ratio and the loan to value rate or ratio is equal to the loan divided by the value. Also, keep in mind the loan amount is always based on the sales price or appraised value, whichever is less. And we'll see a problem like this in just a minute. This loan to value ratio, remember, is the percentage of the sales price or appraised value that the lender will loan. So a loan-to-value ratio is a loan-to-value percentage. Let's do number one. R borrowed $7,500 from the bank at 9% for home improvements. If R repaid the principal and interest at the end of nine months, what was the total amount of the interest paid and what was the total amount paid? So let's set up our our problem to find the annual interest and then the monthly interest. And with our memory circle, remember interest is equal to the principal times the rate. So doing that, we get $7,500 times 9%. That gives us annual interest of $675. But we're asked to find nine months. So the first thing we're gonna do is find one month's interest we take the annual interest of 675 divided by 12 months, and that's 5625 per month. And then the nine months interest is calculated by multiplying that 5625 by nine months, or 50625. So if you are asked to find a certain number of months interest, you always find the annual interest first, divide it by 12 months in a year to get one month's interest, and then multiply it by the number of months required. And this nine months interest, 50625, is the answer to the first part of our question. The second part of the question asks us to find the total amount paid. So the total amount would be the principal balance plus the nine months interest. So that equals to $7,500 plus the 50625. So the answer to the second part of the question the total amount paid is $8,006.25. I really want to emphasize that whenever you have an interest problem, you take the loan amount times the annual interest rate to get the annual interest, 
and then divide it by 12 to get the monthly interest. It is possible they could ask you for the per diem interest or the daily interest. So you take the loan amount times the annual interest rate, that gives you the annual interest, and then you would divide it by the number of days in a year, which is 365, to get the per diem interest. It would be a little unusual on the examination to see a question like question number one, where you were asked to actually give two answers, the first one being the amount of interest and the second one being the total payoff. But certainly in real life, we do see that. Number two, what is the annual interest rate on a $6,000 loan when the interest payments are $150 semi-annually on the full amount? What we're looking for here is the annual interest rate. So let's first find the annual interest. Since it says that the interest is $150 semi-annually, if we multiply that by two, that gives us annual interest of $300. Now we can set up our memory circle with the interest being $300, the loan amount being $6,000. What are we looking for? We're looking for the rate. So that tells us to divide the interest by the principal, the $300 by the loan amount of $6,000. So our annual rate is 0 0.05 or 5%. In this question, we weren't asked to find the interest, but the rate. So what do you do? You insert the small dollars, the interest on top, the large dollars, the principal or loan amount on the bottom, and then you cover up the rate. That tells you to divide the interest by the loan amount to determine the rate of interest. Number three, the list price of a home is $70,000. A buyer and seller enter into a purchase agreement for $65,000. If the bank appraises the property for $68,000 with a loan-to-value ratio of 80%, what loan amount can be obtained? The key point in this problem is to remember that the loan is always based on the sales price or appraisal, whichever is less. So in this particular situation, which one is lower than the other? Well, it is the, you got it, it's the $65,000. The purchase agreement is for $65,000, the appraisal for sixty-eight. dollars So it's the $65,000 that the loan is based on. So that being the case, the loan is equal to the value times the loan to value ratio. It's 65,000 times 80% or 0.80 our loan is $52,000. Here this question gave us three numbers. It gave us a list price of $70,000, a sales price of $65,000, and an appraised value of $68,000. You've got to remember that loans are always based on the sales price or appraised value, whichever is less. Never on the list price, of course, but if you misread this question or try to do it too quickly, you could easily come up with an answer which would be incorrect, but you might think you got it correct because it would be one of the four choices given. Number four, a bank makes a loan of $90,000 for a home. If this figure is 75% of its market value, what is its market value? Now, one of the things that some people might try to do here is simply take 75% of 90,000 and then add it to the 90,000. Why is that not correct? Well, it's not correct because of the fact you'd be basing the loan on the loan amount. The loan is based on the value, which is what we're trying to find. So let's set up our memory circle. What do we know? What don't we know? Well, we know the loan, which is the smaller of the two. The loan is smaller than the value, so the loan goes on top, and the value goes on the bottom. That's what we're going to look for, and the loan-to-value ratio, or the percentage, is 75%. Knowing that, in looking for the value, it tells us to divide the loan by the loan-to-value ratio. So that's 90000 divided by 75%, the value then is $120,000. Now, if you want to check this, just take 75% of 120 and that'll give you 90. 
And if you want to check it further, do the math. I'm not going to do it here for you, but if you take 75% of 90 and add it to 90, you're not going to get $120,000. The reason, again, you don't want to do that is because you'd be basing the loan amount on the loan amount. And the, lo and the loan amount is based on the higher number, the unknown, which is the value. As I mentioned in the discussion of this question number four, one of the common mistakes would be to take 25%, which would be the down payment, 25% of that 90000 and add it to the 90000 You can't do that because you're basing the loan amount on the loan amount. You've got to base it on the unknown, which is the value of the property. So if you take 25% of the 90000 and then add it to the 90000 you're going to get 112500 which is not the correct answer. And you could be sure that on the examination, they would have listed that as one of the choices A, B, C, or D. Number five, an interest-only loan of $25,000 is made with three quarterly payments of $825. What is the interest rate? Some people might interpret this as the total of three quarterly payments being $825. It says three quarterly payments of $825. What that means is that the $825 is the quarterly payment. And since there are four quarterly payments in a year, we multiply $825 by four to get the annual interest of $3,300. Now to find the rate, we use the memory circle. We know the interest, the small dollars is 3,300. That goes on top. The loan amount we're given is $25,000 and we're looking for the rate. So the rate then is equal to the interest divided by the loan amount. That's $3,300 divided by 25,000 that gives us an interest rate of 0.132 or 13.2%. When I do this question in a live classroom, I always get somebody who asks, well, why is, why is the question worded that way? Three quarterly payments, I interpreted that as meaning that's the total of the three quarterly payments. Well, I ask you, what if the question had read four quarterly payments? Would that have been less confusing? Four quarterly payments of 825 would still be a quarterly payment of 825. Problem number five points out another potential problem. The answer is 0.132 or 13.2%. But some of you have calculators with which you could set the decimal place. And if you have it set to two decimal places, it might only show 13%. And in that circumstance, 0.13, and in that circumstance, 13% could be one of the other choices along with 13.2%. If you have a calculator that allows you to set the number of decimal places in your display, such as an HP 12C or a real estate qualifier calculator, check with the calculator's literature to determine how to set the decimal to at least three, if not four places for exam purposes. Well, that does it for our math lesson number four on interest and loan amounts.